We're here at the Deland Sport Aviation Showcase. It's the final day of three days, another beautiful day. This time we've come inside the tent because I wanted to look at something that I've had a hint about in the past, but now I'm ready to see what appears to be kind of a full project. I'm Dan Johnson and I'm talking with Alex Rolinski. Alex has got a new venture called Wing Bug. Alex, welcome and tell me what it is that thing you've got in your hand is all about there. Well, thank you, Dan. Um, this is actually a self-encompassed pedostatic system that goes on the outside of the airplane, um, and it transmits all of your air data. So everything, it has its own pedo tube, its own static port, and about seven different sensors, and everything you would get in your cockpit um, in terms of a six-pack display and or glass cockpit view would be able to be replicated right through here. So it takes analog information, barometric data, and it converts that into an electrical voltage output, which then is transmitted wireless wirelessly to a device, in this case a tablet and or your iPhone, for example. Okay, so let's focus on just this for a moment. Now, you said it attaches to your airplane. Well, sure. does it attach to your airplane? Where does it attach to your airplane? So it uses a, a very similar mounting system and will be completely compatible with GoPro mounts. So oh, okay. just like you mount your well, GoPro like camera. Everybody doing that to take a little receiver base or whatever they call that thing, and you can stick that on and that'll stay there through. Exactly, and so what's and on here. just clips onto that. Correct. So what's on here right now is a GoPro mount, in fact. Um, so you can see it just screws right on and clips in your, onto your strut, bottom of your wing, as long as it's facing direction of flight is really okay. the critical component. So the critical thing you got to do then is to get the pitot tube. Are you Correct. Calling that a pitot tube? The, it is a pitot tube, tube, yes. Okay. <laughs> so you got to make sure that's aimed right. Is there um, you want it yeah, basically out on the wing would work the best is based through our testing. Um, now you do want it outside of prop wash. So unlike this aircraft where it's, okay. it's a pusher, um, on a puller system you would want it further out yeah, so um, for that reason. Out to grab the box. You're going to get something like this. Similar to this, it's a carrying case. Um, the box, obviously, once you get it in the box, you'll open it up, you'll be able to pull the device out. It's self-encompassed, as I mentioned before, so there's no wires, no plug-in. Um, you would definitely want to charge it a little bit to make sure the battery is fully charged. It might use as a micro USB port, similar to a lot of cell phones. Uh, so you might already have that at your house, but it will come with a charger. So you'll be able to plug it in. Uh, it takes about 20 minutes to an hour, depending on the, the charge setting that's already on the battery. Once it's fully charged, you'll then be able to go out to your airplane, you mount it, Turn on the, uh, the iPad, in this case, or your iPhone. Um, once you've downloaded the app and it's ready to go, okay. you start flying. So back to back to the wing bug part itself. It's out on the wing. It uh, sends its information by uh, wireless or Bluetooth, or how does it get to the how does it get to the iPad? Great question, Dan. So originally we did use uh, Bluetooth. Unfortunately, we we lost a lot of connectivity, um, oftentimes throughout the flight, just based on the magnetic field from, of course, your magnetos and the metal on the airframe. It significantly reduced our signal strength, and um, it wasn't as accurate. So we went to a Wi-Fi based system, and that does allow us to connect to multiple networks as well. So I can run this off of different devices or connect to other people's wing bugs if I'm flying in formation. Okay. Yeah. You told me an interesting story earlier about. You and your buddy are flying along in your each in your own airplane. You've each got a wing bug on because, as you said, everybody's got to have a wing bug. But then you can see his data on your iPad in your lap or in your airplane or however you've got it mounted. Is that right? That is correct. So ideally, you would be able to connect to his plane and you would have his six-pack display in your airplane. So you could literally put it side by side and no longer have to rely on as much communication, uh, more visual, so you'd know what the heading was as well as the airspeed to maintain and things like that. So it makes formation flying a lot easier and safer. Cool. Okay, so, so the combination then is the wing bug that you supply, the app that you supply, the user's own I iPhone as well? iPhone as well, yes. It is compatible with any Apple device. Right okay. now iOS based. Um, eventually we are going to be merging into Android. The only downside with Android being open source, it is difficult to make it work on all of the devices that are out on the market. So we're working, we're, our biggest focus is quality. And right now the quality with iOS is there, so we're eventually going to be releasing Android once we can match that. Well, no, no, no downside to Android at all. That's a fine system as well. But virtually every pilot in the country, they may use another, some other kind of phone, but they, a lot of them have an iPad, and a lot of them already have a mount for their iPad or something in the panel or a yoke mount or a hand mount or whatever they've got. So they've already got that equipment. All they need to do is add this in your app, and they're ready to go. Exactly, and that is correct. I mean, it's very simple, very user-friendly. And the whole point of this was to keep it completely portable. So if you own multiple airplanes, you take one from one to the other. You can store your aircraft data in terms of, like I mentioned earlier, V-speeds. Um, so you can pull up your six-pack for that airplane 
you know, within a matter of seconds um, from interchanging in terms of one aircraft to the next. And it just gives you the simplicity as well as the portability that nobody else has to match. There are a lot of differences in terms of um, what we do compared to some of the others out on the market that people may think is similar. Um, however, most of those that information is GPS based. It's kind of calculated then. Correct. Um, so it's, it's fairly inaccurate when it comes to when you're going maneuvering in a lower speeds or a landing or a takeoff situation. It becomes an unsafe environment if you're relying on that sort of data. It's great for navigation. It's great for going from point A to point B. But when it comes to actually flying the aircraft. Something like this is much more um, accurate in, in that regard because it is air data. This is primarily designed as a flight instrumentation uh, device. And one of the tricks is, you know, a lot of people try to um, get away with uh, using different sensors and things like that and, and kind of, I wouldn't say cut corners, but really save costs ideally, and, and that's fine, but the downside of that is some of it renders others inaccurate. And what I mean by that is like, I'll take, give you an example here. When I use my compass, um, this has a, um, a compass built in, so you can see as I rotate, it's not GPS based, obviously, because GPS, I would have to be moving for it to even pick up my heading. And the trick is with this, as you see my compass move, my bank angle does not turn, like my, my airplane is not turning left or right. You know, that's done by obviously this movement here. Ah, yeah, and you can okay. see my compass fairly stays still. Obviously my hand isn't as steady as I'd like, but you can see that's what turns out. So those are two different sensors that are feeding into this. A lot of people try to try to cheat the system by using one sensor to do both. So you'll notice in the other products that when you turn in terms of the compass heading, your airplane will bank also. This is removable, completely portable, self-encompassed, so you just mount this, obviously not on a flight control surface, but anywhere on your plane to where it doesn't interfere with the flying aspect, and it can then duplicate what you have in your gauges, and you can fly it on a certified aircraft. You're offering them a system that they could put on there without hardly even notifying FAA, right? That, that is accurate, and that gives you the, the flexibility of, like I mentioned earlier, even if you have multiple aircraft from Experimental 2 certified, you can definitely run this on a multitude of aircraft without having those limitations. You can even mount this to a fabric or Dacron covered aircraft. Uh, oh, is that right? Really? Cause I was going to ask you that because, okay, a metal airplane, a composite airplane, no problem, but what about a fabric airplane? That's a great question. So what we do is we would mount it to an inspection panel, obviously being a hard surface. And the other thing is you can screw it into the inspection panel. There is a logbook entry for that. Um, that does have to be signed off by an AMP, but that gives you that ability to have it then once it's under it's permanently mounted from the aspect of the mount itself not the device the device would just screw on each time you wanted to go fly the real ability here is that it, it, it records this flight data so as you're flying it's all of it, all of it. so it's constantly in the battery in this last 12 hours so like I mentioned earlier this definitely can record up to 12 hours of data um, and it's sending the raw data which then is captured on our website which you log in having having bought one you'll be provided with a login ID and password you can retrieve all of that to then couple with your video if you decided to and the trick there is really for as you mentioned with a flight school or a training environment or even as a pilot that wants to go back and review what happened um, or share with his friends they'd have that ability to review that flight so that flight may as I mentioned earlier for a student may cost hundred and twenty dollars to go fly well now they can replay that flight two or three times and that becomes really from a cost-effective perspective it starts to be more valuable to them so their hundred and twenty dollars turns into three flights versus just one um, with wing bug and it's exactly what they would have seen in the cockpit, which is a huge advantage to, like I mentioned earlier, those GPS-based ones versus the ADA HARS, which this is, is able to do. And, and having your own self, you know, your own pitot tube, your own static system all encompassed in a one unit that doesn't need to be tapped into the existing plane really get, is what gives us the ability to be all in one. And so you, you get one of these and you fly different kinds of airplanes maybe, you just move it around from airplane to airplane very easily. Sure, exactly. And especially in a 103 scenario, like I used to fly a Quicksilver MX. I didn't have gauges in my MX. This gives me that ability to have a glass cockpit in my MX. You know, so when you think about just the value add there, it's huge. Um, and But uh, on a 103 scenario, this, like as we talked about the weight itself, I mean, you're talking saving at least six pounds worth of gauge um, gauges in terms of weight. A lot of great information, Alex. Uh, tell us how we find you on the web and... Um uh, as the product comes on the market where we can find out more about that, get the latest pricing and so forth. Sure, and, and thank you, Dan. So we have wingbug.com, so that's W-I-N-G-B-U-G.com. Um, and there is actually, in, within that, embedded in the website, there is the ability for you guys to provide us feedback, um, which we do love from the consumers. If pilots want to see something different, we're a pilot-centric kind of company. We, we want to make it this user-friendly for anybody, and its simplicity is really one of our goals. And obviously the portability, which we've, I think we've accomplished. Um, but any feedback they can provide, we're more than happy to hear from them. Um, so they can write us right through the website, as well as review any updates 
rates and things like that. Okay, great stuff. Well, I appreciate all that. Uh, you can find lots more. Well, I'll, I don't have to, anything about wing bug yet, but you can count on some more of that. You can find all that and lots of affordable aviation on bydanjohnson.com.